So let's go back to the application. Remember when you're using the observe HTTP events and you set the report progress to true, that's usually when you're making a request to either upload or download a very large amount of data. So you can see how this was really quick and we didn't really understand what happened here because it says loaded and it gives you a number and then the type is three, okay? Which means that there was a type one, type two and type three. And it happened really, really fast and we didn't even see anything. So I'm going to show you how you can actually use this in a more useful way. So let's go back to the application and I'm going to go ahead and define a new function. And this function is going to upload some files to a server. So let me go ahead and show you what the backend looks like, because you need to understand exactly what kind of response we are expecting whenever we make this request. So I'm going to open IntelliJ here. So it doesn't necessarily have to be Java. It can be any backend. So if you guys are good with some backend development server application can be Python or whatever the case might be, then you can set up a backend. But I'm just going to be using Java in this situation. So this is the application that I have in the backend and it's going to take a list of files coming from the request. Okay. So we can make a request to slash file slash upload and pass in a bunch of files to be uploaded. And this code is very straightforward. So what I'm doing here, I'm getting a directory. In that case, I'm just going to go to my user home and then go to the, my downloads. And inside of my downloads, I have another folder called uploads. And that's where I'm going to save all of the files that I receive. And then this function is going to take those files. It's going to create a list for all the files names. And then I'm going to loop through all of the files. I'm going to get the name of the file. And then I'm going to define the storage and then I'm going to save the file or make a copy of the input stream that I get from the file. And then I'm going to call it replace existing. So if this file was already in that folder, it's just going to go ahead and replace it. And then every time I loop, I'm just going to add those file names inside of my array. And then at the end of it, I just return HTTP response. Okay. So the 200 and then inside of the body of that response, I pass in the list of all the files or an array of file names. So that's what the backend is going to be doing. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that folder right now. So let's go to my folder. As you can see here, this is the folder. Okay. So you can see I'm inside my downloads and inside of the uploads folder and the folder is empty right now. I can refresh it. You see, there's nothing in there right now. So we're going to save all of our files inside of this folder. So I'm going to go ahead and run that backend server or backend server application or API and let it come up. And this application is listening on port 9000. Okay. So it's running on my local machine and it's listening on port 9000 and we have to send the request to file slash upload. Okay. So I'm going to minimize that for now. So let's just copy one of those function and I'm just going to remove this options for now. And we're going to define, well, this is going to return a, an array of users. We're just going to leave this function the way it was. And I'm going to scroll down in here. I'm going to define another function. So I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it upload files. And it's going to take a form data and I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. So let's do form data and that's going to be of type form data. And this is going to return an observable of HTTP events because we want to watch for all the events and oops, this is supposed to be form data. And this is going to return an array of string. Okay. So you remember the back end is going to return a list or an array of string of all of the files that we save. And we have to pass this type as well to the get. Okay. So we're going to copy this, go in here and pass this type. Okay. This is supposed to be a post request because we're trying to modify some data on the server. I'm going to change this to a post and I have an extra and another one here. And then we need to pass the file to the server. So here, I'm just going to say form data. Okay. So let's make sure we understand what's going on here. So I'm making an HTTP request. It's going to take a form data inside that form data. I'm going to have a lot of files and then we're going to call a different API this time. So HTTP colon double four slash local host 9,000. And we have to go to file slash upload. Okay. So this is the URL where we have to pass in this form data inside of it. We're going to have all of our files and then we're going to put the option for observe all of the HTTP events and then report progress. We're going to set that to true. Okay. As our options. So now we have this function that we can use in the component. So let's go into the component and we're going to copy this function right here. 
to find another one down there. Whoops. And let's call it on upload, uh, let's say upload files. And it's gonna take all of the files that we're gonna pass to the service function. It's gonna be file array, okay? So what we wanna do here, we want to create this form data and then call the service and pass the service the form data. So for debugging, I'm gonna go ahead and log all of the files that I got. And then I'm gonna create a constant and I'm gonna call it form data and set it equal to a new form data. So the form data is a programmatic representation of a form and you can set you know attribute with it with values. So what we want to do here, we want to loop over all the files that we get and then add them to the form data. So we're gonna say for every file of the file that we got and we need to define this as a constant. So for every file that we get from the user, we want to add them to the form data. So we're gonna do form data, that append, and what we want to do is to pass in the key. So we have to say files, because that's what the backend is expecting. And then we're gonna put the files array with the name. So we're gonna pass in that file, and then the file name. So we're gonna do file that name, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. So just so you guys can connect this all together, if I go to the backend, you see we're expecting a key files and this is how the backend is going to be able to extract all of the files that we have and then pass them in as a multi-part file here which is in java but that can be any language uh, that you want like it can be python or any php backend that you can set up but in this case i'm using java but make sure you put the key for the input as files because that's what the backend is expecting and then now we're going to have this form data which is gonna be like a form input. And then one of the input is gonna have a name of files and it's gonna have all of those files inside of it with the key files and then the file name as well. So now that we have the form data, we can call the service and then call upload files, okay? And then here we're gonna pass in the form data. So whenever we subscribe to this, we're gonna be subscribing to the HTTP event. And if I put my mouse over this, you can see it says HTTP event and eventually it's gonna be resolved to an array of string as the body whenever we get the response. So that's what this all means, HTTP event string array. Now, I'm just not gonna console log this. I wanna have a way to um, watch for every event that occurs so that I can uh, do something with it. So I'm gonna put open and close curly braces so that I can have multiple lines and then I'm gonna go down. And I'm also gonna rename this to events so that we're clear as to what's happening. And then what I wanna do is to switch on those events so I'm gonna call the switch and I'm gonna switch on that event, okay? Because I wanna watch for specific events. And then I'm gonna say for whenever this event is of type upload. So I'm gonna do HTTP event type that. And you can see I have a bunch of options here. So we have upload and download. So what I want is the upload progress. Uh, we can also put the download in there as well. I'm gonna copy this and pass it in here and call the download progress, okay? So whenever this is the case, we want to execute some code. So let's go ahead and just uh, console log that so that we can see it. And then I'm gonna have another case for whenever I got the response. So I'm gonna copy this, go down, and let's just say whenever this is the response. So here I'm gonna call in the response, okay? So that means that whenever we get the actual response from the server. In this case, I wanna console log that response as well or this event. And before we continue, let's make sure we put a brick there so that we can separate those. And I'm gonna put another brick there as well. And we need to switch on the actual type so that we can get rid of these errors. So what I'm doing here is, I know this is gonna be streaming, so we're gonna get every single event that occurs whenever this is this method is called. So I'm saying, hey, I'm gonna switch on those HTTP event type. If the type is upload or download, then I'm gonna console log it. If, the, if I get the response, then I'm also gonna console log it as well. So now we can call this function and see what happens with this request and so that we can watch what's going on with those events because we're gonna be uploading large data that's gonna take time so that we can see all the progress that's happening whenever we're uploading 
a large amount of data.